Good afternoon. I do hope everybody's doing well, of course. A bit of Gran Turismo 3 the last time before Christmas. It has been a couple weeks since I played this. Just been too busy to, uh, to stream on a Wednesday, unfortunately, so... Been a couple weeks, but... We should be set to get a nice few races done today. We are into the Amateur League. I think we've done... See the, yeah, the Japanese, the American, and part of the European Championship. So I guess we'll just have to continue with the European one. Of course, with our 1,000... What was it? 1,600 horsepower Zonda? Which actually was this? A 1,074 horsepower Zonda. Okay. Let's see if I can actually control this thing after so long not playing with it. I think we might have to do some license tests soon as well. Let me see... Yeah, we need to do the International B license tests very soon. Though oddly enough, there's some air license things mixed in here before the International B. So I guess we could do the airs first. Just makes sense in terms of progression. Yeah, there's a lot more airs. Some Bs even mixed in at the bottom here. Which is the previous license to the one we currently have. Okay, let's give this, uh, this European one a shot. Oh, uh, I do need to change the oil on this thing, which means we're gonna do another event without the oil changed. I think this has been going on for about, I don't know, like three full streams now. Me, need, me needing to change this oil. God, I forgot how ridiculous this car was. Well, I mean, I knew it was ridiculous, but this is a bit much. Thankfully, some of the later events in this series, like the, uh, the Amateur League, will require me to use other cars, which will hopefully be more controllable and less prone to just sliding into every single wall they encounter. But at least this thing's fast. Even if it's horribly uncontrollable and looks really dumb and has a weird exhaust, at least it's fast, and we can get through these races very quickly. Though I am thinking, maybe it would be worth switching Wednesday to play something else for a little bit. Kind of like how we did with GTA, and then come back to this. Because this is going to be a very long, long trek, is completing this game. So we can't always come back to this at some other point. Like, complete another game first, and then do this again. Or maybe play some more GTA, and then when I've done all the new update content, come back to this. I think that's probably going to be worth a shot. it would give me a bit of time to do all of the time attack and offline stuff as well. Not offline, um, arcade stuff. because I do need to get all of that done in order to get 100% completion for this game. Though I'm just curious what else I should play. I'm really tempted to play Ratchet and Clank. Like the original one. And play through that as a series as well. So like, start with the first Ratchet and Clank, then the second, third, and then Gladiator. And I think that's the extent of ones which are on the PS2. After that, I think it's PlayStation 3 and PSP. Um, I've never had a PSP. Never want to have a PSP. Really couldn't care less about playing the PSP ones. Though I have been hoping that the new one that was on the PS5 will come to PC at some point. I doubt it ever will, but it's always nice to hope.
Oh, there's also Elden Ring as well. That I was looking to play at some point. So that's another idea on the block to pick from. Twenty-two seconds ahead, though, this car is just stupid. I know I keep coming back to that with every single time I play this game, and several times a day, but... Just actually controlling it is the most difficult thing I've done in this game. And I don't think you can, like, accurately get a feel for that unless you play the game yourself. Oh, well, that's one rest down, at least. My favourite track, Special Stage Route 5, with the wonderful happen. But I'm pretty sure I could just lay myself into the barrier and drift around it without actually trying to turn, so I shouldn't complain too much. Actually been pretty smooth so far. Surprised. Alright, here it comes. Oh yep, it went way too wide on that one. Just a complete lock up and drift into the corner. Oh, and the oversteer as well. Took that way too tight. That is just one of this car's biggest flaws though, is that because of how fast it is. It's really difficult to get proper position on the track for the next for the next corner. So, if you end up out of position, it makes it much harder to take every single corner in whatever sequence you're doing. Let's try this one again, break a lot earlier. Okay, that worked out pretty good actually. And we're at least in the right position for this corner now as well. It'd help if I didn't put myself out of position for this one though.
No, I made the same mistake I always do trying to take that like a regular corner. Come on. Very nearly done. Just one more little sequence of corners. Then the home straight. Then we can get off this track. And that's it. Race is finished. Brilliant. Move on to the next one. So that was as far as I got last time through here. What's next? Oh, Grand Valley. Even though I slowed down so much earlier than I should have, still went flying off the edge of that. There's too much acceleration. Yep, yeah, same problem there. I mean, it's not a problem. We're fast enough that we could literally just do that on every corner and not suffer for it. But it'd be nice to get, like, a, a smoother drive out of this thing. I think the only way I could really achieve that would be to remove some tuning from it, like take some parts away. Get that horsepower lowered so it's uh, a little bit more well behaved. Try slowing down even more than last time. There we go. That gave us a bit more control through there. Push and let off through here. There we go. Oh no, still a bit too much. This is an untamable beast, is this Zonda? I actually just thought, do I have the best tires I can get on this thing? Because there's like the, the super softs. But I don't know if I bought that or if I'm just on medium soft. Because I usually buy medium soft just as like a budget option, so I have more money for the rest of the parts on the car. But we have so much money now that I'm sure I must have gotten the best tires. I'll have to double check that. Because if I don't have them... That's probably something I should do. That might fix a lot of these issues.
Okay, that was a little bit more controlled, I suppose. See, it's just the acceleration. Almost flipped around if I wasn't staring the other direction completely. Still, I'll take a 24 second lead. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Though this does remind me of when we got the devil parts in Road Trip Adventure and the car just took off. It went so fast. That That's what this reminds me of. Like we go from base Zonda, like 500 horsepower, to this. down. We're about halfway to being able to buy an endgame car now as well. We need about a million credits to hit that margin where we can really pick out something good. Though I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna pick. Whatever I do get, I think it might end up being something that I can very readily swap out dirt tires on and use it for rallying. Because I know I do have like the, the Lancer and stuff that I was thinking of using for rally as one of my like primary four-wheel drive cars. But some of the late game cars, there's like the um the Castrol Supra, things like that, can also be used as rallies. So maybe it's just worth getting something like that. I mean, I could get the Escudo, right? I think that's the fastest car in this game, aside from the open-wheel Formula 3 car. But the Formula 3 thing is not as versatile as the Escudo, which you can use literally anywhere. So yeah, maybe the Escudo would be a good shout. Though I can't remember if that's one you purchase, or one that you win. It's probably something that you win thinking about it. Might be worth looking up which event that comes out of and just sort of like trying to beeline for that even. I know this track's just like a, a reverse of the Rome circuit, but it becomes such a different track in reverse. A lot of what would otherwise be very long sweeping turns are just completely different. It's probably one of the most... I guess probably like the most different reverse tracks. The others kind of have a similar driving style, you just turn in the other direction due to the way that most of this track's corners flow on the regular direction you go through. It's kind of like tight turn followed by flowing turn. So if you're doing flowing turn followed by tight turn, you still need to slow down a lot more for the flowing, uh, flowing sections of the track. Also, I only just noticed there was just a section of aqueduct sticking out of the side of this track. We'll see it as we go around again, I'll point it out, but that's kind of a weird scenery choice. I don't think Rome just had, like, random pieces of aqueduct next to their roads. It didn't even look like it was very much in the way of, you know, a structure. It was just, like, a, a couple pieces of it. A 
Okay, it should be just up here in a minute. Is that it there? No, it's a bit further around. Where are you? That's the Colosseum, at least. Oh yeah, it's got to be after the Colosseum. Okay, there it is. This is just like a random bit of aqueduct there. No bother, that's another rest down. Joy from Cop d'Azur. Normally don't mind it so much. This car mm, may be a bit of a problem. When you've got a car that has too much horsepower and too much acceleration, the last thing you want is a lot of really tight turns that you need to accelerate out of. anything you need to break for very often, I suppose. Keep forgetting that little side bit there in the track. That wall just often drives straight into it. Even going down to first gear is too fast for some of these corners. It's ridiculous. Put that wall a bit hard there. Like I said though, as soon as we can get out of this car and into something else, the better, really. <laughs> it's not quite the same game anymore. The funny thing is, this isn't even as fast as we can go, considering oil quality in this game is handled by reducing top speed and acceleration. It just kind of degrades the overall performance of your car. So because we need to get our oil changed, we're going like 10% slower than we should be. Which is already too much for this track. So I don't know, I almost don't want to get the oil in this car changed because it makes it more controllable. You should be driving around with like a, a black slurry chugging around the engine. Alright, there's just one more lap of this madness to go.
know, that was a lot of other stuff. All back on course very quickly. Alright, I think I need new brakes. Can I get better brakes? Do I have sports brakes installed on this thing? I must do. I need to check that though. I need to check the tires and I need to check the brakes on this thing. Because if I am missing those things, I don't know what I've been playing at this whole time. And if I do have sports brakes, I might be able to use my brake balance controller to make my brakes stiffer. To sort of force them to brake harder. Might end up locking up more, but I kind of feel like I need it at this point. Brilliant, that is the cup finished. 20,000 for that. And what do we get? What car do we earn? I see a spoiler. I see two spoilers. Uh, but I got a Mini Cooper. I got a purple Mini Cooper. Great. <laughs> I wanted one of those sports carts. I wanted that spoiler, whatever it was. But no, I got a Cooper. Is it like a special kind of Cooper? It's just a 1.3i. Don't I already have one of these? Yeah, it's 61 brake horsepower. What's this one? Also 61. Okay, so I haven't modded the other one. Do I want the purple one? Or do I want the sort of mint blue one? I think I like the purple one better, so let's, let's sell the blue one. There we go. That's like 20 pence extra. Okay, tune shop. Um, brakes? Do I have sports brakes? I do have sports brakes and the brake balance controller. Do I have... Best tires? I do have super soft tires, okay. So, it, there's just nothing I can do about this under then, I guess. Uh, no, I don't want beginner league. We've already finished all of that. Okay, I'll leave the International B stuff until after we've done the rest of the races. We just need FF. Nothing else is excluded. Okay. Let's go pick out an FF then. Oh hey, the Mini Cooper's an FF. Uh, I've got the Accord. Avanzana. And the Yaris. I'm not taking the Yaris. I guess we're using the Accord then? Let's go see what else I can mod with this thing. Right, that's the sports brakes. Um, does this thing have a turbo? I don't think it does, does it? No, no turbo. So, got stage two and air tuning. That's the best we can get. Get the full balance to put us up another ten horsepower. Uh, racing chip we already have. Just improve our drive train parts. Racing flywheel, triple clutch. Can't get a better drive shaft. Look at the racing transmission. I think I bought that but didn't fit it. Alright, grab. The customizable differential. Oh yeah, but there's no turbo. What tires do I have? I only have medium softs. Let's get uh, super softs. It is an investment of money, but that's fine. Third lightweight stage. There we go. All right, now I need to make sure I change those parts that I bought properly. Record. Um, oh, I don't do it in here, do I? I do it in running settings. I have to load a track to do this, unfortunately. Uh, 
so what was it I didn't put on? Uh, I don't have any of those board. It was... Uh, transmission, here we go. Or customization. It's fine. Settings for it. You need to fix your damn gearbox because it always makes it... Uh, nope, not that one. Bottom one. There we go. It always closes the gearbox too much, so I stick it on the medium setting. Just because otherwise we lose a ton of top speed and stuff like um, the big oval test track we can't actually compete with the other drivers on. Just because we don't have the top speed to do it. Which is a pain, but it's definitely worth it once you sort of widen the gearbox up a bit more again. Alright, FF Challenge. At least we start with Deep Forest Rest, where it's my favourite track in the game. I'm just gonna have to get used to driving a car that actually works now. Oh, and you see in the bottom left there, we've actually got some tyre simulation in play now. So it's finally started with tyre simulation. So you see how the tyres have sort of changed colour there. They're actually degrading super fast, that's not good. Hey, Ford Shelby GT, how are you? Yeah, you see how fast those tires are degrading? Basically what that is, is just like a measure of tire condition. So once those go from blue to green to yellow, orange, red, they become less and less effective over time. So it only actually introduces this at this stage of the game. Previous sort of tracks that you have, the, uh, the previous events, you don't actually have to worry about this. You know, everything from oversteer, understeer, causing your tires to squeal on the track. Um, tire spin when you set off, like you saw the um, the front wheels as I started this race. Anything like that will degrade tire condition. So we're actually like halfway through the condition on these tires in half a lap, which is not good at all. We might end up just, like, having to pit twice in this res, which is absurd, considering it's only five laps. Hmm, I don't know, though. Maybe we can make it through the next lap on these tires. We'll have to see how bad the performance gets. I don't think there's, like, any kind of tyre popping mechanic. You can't be disqualified or end the race early because your tyres have been blown off your wheel or anything like that. Though that front right is taking a beating. You know what, I hate to see what the tyre condition is going to be like on that Zonda when we bring the Zonda back out. But yeah, our front right is just completely shot now. I kind of want to keep going just to see what the reaction from the car is going to be like when the tyres just don't work anymore. Okay, yeah, we're going to keep going. We're going to do a whole lap on canvas. On the canvas of the front ride. I don't know if the AI actually pit as well. Which will be a problem. If I pit and they don't, then I'm going to lose like 10 seconds on them, which is going to be really annoying. Also, I took that way too quick, though. So something like this as well is also where you might consider using two different compounds on your car. So I could use the wheels, uh, the tires rather, that I previously had, like the medium softs on the front, 
Oh, we just lost so many positions. Yeah, so I can put the medium softs on the front wheels because they degrade a lot faster. And keep the super softs on the back. Yeah, we don't have any grip anymore. We're just sliding around. Okay, so we're going to have to fix that, basically. We can't let that be. We needed the pit on the previous lap. But this is good stuff to know. This is good research for all the future races. So I think if I do change those tires over, we might then end up with a scenario where we pit once in this race. Okay, but we do have to pit now. The first time in this playthrough. So as we can see, the AI do not pit. Well, I do have the pit lane right at the end of the track. Alright, fresh set of tyres. 18 seconds back. So that really ruined my chances of winning this one, eh? So basically, I just have to hope that the AI do in fact pit. Otherwise, I lose. I get a solid 6th place. At that front right already! I guess I just have to start buying two sets of tyres for every car that's not four-wheel drive now. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to have the tyre simulation on. It just seems way, way too fast for those tyres to degrade like that. I don't feel like I've done anything particularly obscene either. Like, I haven't been drifting around the track, I haven't been taking corners way too fast. I think I've collided with one other car, maybe two. So yeah, they just don't pit at all. I mean, I'm catching back up quite well. Who knows, maybe I can still close this out? Hopefully not going to come in sixth, at least. Hmm, I don't know. I don't feel like they've slowed down unnecessarily, either. So I don't know if the AI even have tyre simulation if they're not pitting then. I can't believe I've made up like 20 seconds of time. That is not too shabby. Don't think I'm going to get the first place though. Which is not close enough. Yeah, it's super close, but not quite. Half a second. That's all it was. That's all we were out by. Just half a second. So if I were to change those tires over then, is that all that it would take? Obviously it's going to affect my grip, but my backs weren't anywhere near close to, um... to going, were they? So, fronts, uh, racing medium soft, 
the T6 is. Let's try this out, see how this works. And I think I'm gonna open on much lower revs just so that we don't get quite as much wheel spin. Okay, we definitely got some wheel spin still. And I can see that my tires have been slightly damaged, but they're much better this time around. Yeah, that front right still. I mean, that's the condition they were in after I got off the start line. That front right, but... Uh, I don't know. Will it be enough? Mess that section up a little bit. I think we're fine though. But our tire wear seems much more evenly distributed now. Definitely makes a lot of sense to use the tires the way that I've got them set up, I think. If anything, the rears have actually degraded more than the fronts. But considering how fast the fronts went down last time, that's kind of shocking. Okay, just about to hit half condition on the tyres then, I think. I think that sort of transition from green to yellow is halfway. So maybe we still do need to pit? Mm. I don't know if the the rears would have held out throughout the entire race in that last one we did, so maybe it's still necessary, but at least we'll actually get to the pits with enough grip to keep our full speed up. So what do we do? Do we pit this lap? Well, I've got enough of a lead. You know, I'll see how I go. We'll see what the tires are like next lap, and we might not even need to pit in the end. There, that's not good. I doubt that really helped with my tire wear situation. You know what? I'm looking at things. I think we're fine. I think this tyre setup will carry us the full five laps. Yeah, I mean, they're just starting to go orange now. We're not even red yet, so... Not even the slightest hint of red, even. Um... Then again...
I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I should have pitted this lap. So I could get a lap and a half on fresh tyres. Feels like I can catch up a lot easier, considering I'm faster than these other cars, and the only reason they're keeping up with me so well is because they have my slipstream for pretty much the entire race, and slipstream is a bit overpowered in this game. So maybe the earlier I pit, the better. So I pit as early as possible, so that I'll still have enough tire left to get through the end of the race. So if I were to pit on, like, lap two, that might be more effective than waiting later. I don't know, we'll work it out in time. We'll figure it out. Oh, I think that curb hop just ruined that back tire there. Okay, that's not good. So I think aside from that back tire getting ruined there, we were actually fine. Do the full five laps. Oh yeah, we have lost a lot of grip already, so that back right tire is completely shot. front right's about to go as well. I think we'll just about make it before we start losing positions, but it's going to be close. Very close. Alright then. That worked out. Okay, so... Stronger compound tyres on the fronts for a, for a front-wheel drive. Seems to be the way to go. Hey there, Amya. How are you doing? Alright, Rome circuit in reverse. Same again, another five laps. I think I'll try it then. I'll try the pit on lap two. See how that does for me. Because that'll give me plenty of catch-up time. And considering we just about... had our tyres shed... by the end of the previous race... we should be just fine off of the back of that. Oh, you still have classes this close to Christmas? But I shouldn't have hit that curb. Yeah, usually, um, you get two weeks off here. Sort of like the week before and the week after Christmas, so... All the students I know back home have already finished education for the year. Excuse you. And here I am trying not to ruin my tires too quick. Noticing that all these curbs are not doing me any favors and this guy just blasts by. Oh, it's today that you finish for the year, is it? Okay. 
Well, yeah, I do hope you enjoy your rest, then. You got any plans for over Christmas? You up to anything interesting? To buy Crash Day on Steam. Okay. I don't think I've seen that one. I might have to, uh... Look it up after we're finished here. But I, I have been known also to spend certain Christmases gaming. Like when I got my Xbox 360 <laughs> first. I got it off of um, my mom with... Um, she got Halo Reach with it for me. And I took it upstairs and I finished Halo Reach the same day she bought me it. So yeah, I've definitely been in the situation where Christmas Day is gaming day. <laughs> As you get older, it becomes more of like a, a family politics thing, going to see everybody, but... You know, enjoy it while you've got the chance, I suppose. So I think the plan then is to pit this lap. Or should I go for next lap? I'm going to go this lap because that was the idea that I had at the start of the rest. We're just going to follow through on the strategy. Well, the most common cause of that, Shelby, is overheating. So just make sure you get some compressed air, blast it through some of the fan vents every now and then, and keep it somewhere that it's not just going to get clogged up and dusty. And you should be able to avoid that as for as long as possible. Oh, thanks, Auto Drive, for just putting me into a wall, by the way. Okay, brilliant. We just lost a lot of time, but that's fine. We can catch back up. Oh, you're going on a trip. Interesting, interesting. It's never really been something I considered. Usually for Christmas, we just go around and visit family. Or they come and visit us. It depends what everybody's up to in the year. You're already doing that? Yeah, that's good to know then. As long as you take care of your Xbox properly, it should be fine. Mine's really old now. It was the um, the black Xbox 360 Elite. I've had it for forever, and it still works just fine. I use it to, um, to pull games onto USBs to emulate them. So I know it still works because I use it regularly. But that might be something for you to consider as well if you are, uh, if you're ever worried about your Xbox dying off, is backing all your games up onto your PC so you can use something like Xenia to play them if your Xbox gets damaged at all in future. Yes, I've actually started with um, preparation for Landlord Super, so in the new year I'll be doing that. At the moment I'm putting together like um, a time-lapse as a, a members-only thing to start with. Just of like completely tearing down the starter property and building up a new one. Um, and then I'm going to be playing through Landlord Super again because they've released a new update for that, the Yuppie update, which is like the highest class of tenant. Uh, they've added like new furniture catalogs and stuff, so we're, we're essentially very close to getting the full release of Landlord Super. So I'm going to play through some more of that. Um, and I'm thinking in the new year, 
Maybe putting Gran Turismo 3 down for a bit, kind of like how we did with GTA, and picking up something else for a bit. Completing that and then coming back to Gran Turismo just as a bit of a break. Because this is a very, very long game to 100%. I mean, I'm definitely going to do it. I'm going to aim to have it done in the next year at least. But... If I pick something else up for a little bit, that should hopefully... You know, stop me from getting bored of this game or burning out on it or anything. Though if you have any games that you're looking at that you might want to suggest, I'm more than open to ideas as well. Horror genre isn't really my kind of thing. It needs to be very atmospheric and not based on jump scares, otherwise I find it quite boring. It's like your traditional horror games that people usually like playing, like the viral jump scare ones, have absolutely no interest to me because I just don't get scared of video games. So I'll have to have a look at what it's like before I can really say yes or no to it. Though it's generally not something I'd consider. Something like Phasmophobia, where it's based entirely on the atmosphere and your interaction with the world, and on very clever mechanics. That's the kind of horror game that I would like, so unless it's like that, then I don't really know, to be honest. I, I wouldn't want to say yes or say that I'm interested, because I can't guarantee that I would be. And I'd rather not lie to you, you know? Might be about to lose position off of that lit break, but no, we're okay. We're okay. Maybe Dead Space Remake? I've seen a few people play Dead Space, um, it would just be like another action adventure to me, I think. Kind of like Gears of War. It would just play like Gears of War if I was playing it, so I don't know if anybody would really find that interesting, you know, if they're looking for somebody to get scared of the game. Okay, one more race. Our pit strategy is working, thankfully. Your brother played it? What did you think of it? Did it seem fun to them, or... Were they not that interested? Oh, that sand trap melted that tire. Okay, that's not good. Need to behave a little bit more when we have tire simulation turned on, then.
Well, never mind. I said I'd be here for a bit more, but apparently that sand trap didn't melt my tire, and the other one did. So I don't know, maybe it was the curb that melted my tire and not the sand before? You high on life. Is that the, the like, Bugs Life looking game? The, the, what was it people said? Did somebody say that it was like a Rick and Morty producer's game? Yes, that's it. Oh god. Okay. I probably wouldn't enjoy that one either then, because I really don't gel with Rick and Morty. Like, that show to me just looks like the producers took an absolute ton of acid and then asked themselves what people who also take a lot of acid would like, and that's the show. And seeing the way that some people act as well, I feel like the people who watch it also take a lot of acid. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just not my thing. You enjoyed it? I don't know. Really not the kind of thing I like. Okay, let's get these tires changed. Nice to actually get some use out of these pits, I think. It's the first day we've used them. They've just been sat here otherwise. So we've lost 14 seconds so far, probably more like 18. Maybe close to 20 now. So we have a lot of time to make up. Took that hairpin really bad. That's what the purpose of us pitting this early is for, though, because now I have an absolute ton of time to catch up in. Though it would be much more fair to see the AI pit as well. Though I suppose that kind of just promotes you to modify your car, considering you need to be faster than them, both on and off track. We are catching up. Probably about 10 seconds behind now, I think. 15, okay. Jesus, we didn't catch up anywhere near as much as I thought we did. Yeah, there is some endgame story in there. I just didn't think it would be right to include that as part of the series because then if you were watching along with it and bought the game yourself there was nothing left for you to experience too which is kind of why I just went through the main storyline because as much as it's great to be able to share the game with people there needs to at least be something left for them to play afterwards on their own 
And that's also kind of how I play uh, Pokemon games, is I'll do one playthrough that's just the main story, and then I'll do a second playthrough where I'll do all of the post-game stuff, all of the side stories. There's actually a lot of content that I didn't cover in that series because there's stuff like um, a whole other arc of legendary Pokemon, so there's like four legendaries in the game that I didn't get. Um, all of the lessons that you can take at the schooling game have little side stories for all of the teachers and stuff. Which is also how you access that legendary side story. So it's definitely worth having a look through at all the bits I didn't show. Which kind of reminds me of something funny. Uh, they've deleted it since they posted it, but somebody left a comment where it was like, Thanks for nothing, you went straight to Penny and didn't do any of the previous Teams of Star stuff. And I just went to go reply, I was like, Mate, this is a series, what, what are you talking about? But by then I think they'd realised and deleted their comment. Which I thought was pretty funny. I mean, I'm not going to call the person out specifically who did it, but... I don't know. You need to be able to laugh at these things when you're doing... <laughs> when you're doing YouTube, I think. If you can't and you just let people being angry at you sort of go to your head, definitely makes it harder to do. I don't know if I'm going to catch this first placed car. This is the first time I've seen them since, they, since I pit. Three seconds behind, almost four, and we're on the last lap. Oh, that was bad. That's not going to help me in any way. Now there's that. Come on, can I get in like a proper line, please? Thank you. It's just the straight now. I don't know if we have the speed to catch. Oh, this is a shame. It means we miss out on the car, unfortunately. Yeah, 1.2 seconds behind, so if I didn't hit all the sand traps and everything on, like, every lap we played, maybe we would have gotten the win there, but now we have to do that race again. Sorry, just got a couple of messages I need to reply to. Yeah, I enjoyed making them daily, actually. I did have to, um, in a couple of cases, record like two or three at a time to edit further down the line, just because I was working a lot as well. Uh, a couple of cases I got a little bit too tired doing it, like trying to keep up with it. But I, I do enjoy making stuff like that more regularly again, hopefully in the new year when I'm not working quite so much. I'll be able to do things more regularly again. You know, like we used to do like three videos a week, which I haven't been able to do for a long time.
Okay, hold on. Let's give this another try. Hopefully then, if we can avoid these sand bunkers and things like that, we should be able to win this one. Shouldn't need to change anything with the car. Our tires were fine when we finished as well, so we'll stick with the end of lap two pit. Uh, no, I don't follow football. I mean, it's just a lot of grown men rolling around on the ground crying because somebody took a ball from them. It's really not interesting to me. I mean, come on, that's basically what they do for half the game. Somebody knocks them slightly and they just do a fucking backflip and lie on the ground clutching their leg, crying, hoping to get a, a penalty or something. Which paid actors. make many hardcore football supporters angry. I mean, I respect that they can support whatever they want to support, and if they like the sport, they like the sport. That's perfectly fine. You can like what you like. Equally, I can dislike what I dislike, and I feel like my reasons for disliking it are quite legitimate. It does have its charms. I mean, the sense of camaraderie it can give people who support the same team is nice, like, bringing people together, being able to support the same thing is good, I appreciate that. I just think there's better things we could do it around, you know? Also tourism, it, it adds a lot of tourism to countries, things like the World Cup. So, that's always good for their economies. So I can get behind that idea. Not a fan of it, but your parents are. Yeah, that's that's not fun while you're growing up, is it? Like, always having to handle them putting football on TV when you really don't want to have anything to do with it. Like, every Sunday, it'll be match day or whatever, and as soon as the TV comes on, you're like, right, okay, I'm going to play outside, see you later. I do like how it gives me control of the car back temporarily while we're up on <laughs> up on the jacks there having our tires changed but doesn't actually let me drive I can just rev the engine a lot just scare the shit out of the the, cat, uh, the crew Yeah, I mean, I guess that's not too bad, because then you have more to connect with your parents over. Which is good, because a lot of people sort of like fall out of touch with their parents as they grow older and more distant from them. I feel like the older I get, the more simple th the things I take pleasure in are. So like, I used to just hardcore grind CSGO with my college friends. But now I just like much calmer, simpler things.
So to be fair, I am getting kind of addicted to DMZ. To the point that I am genuinely thinking of starting back up on Twitch just to play DMZ when I get home from work. I'm not addicted, you are. I can stop any time I like. I just don't want to. You know, that kind of deal. I don't know, the more I think about it though, the more I feel like it's probably a good idea. Because there's very little in terms of discovery for streaming on YouTube. Considering that, like, nobody opens this website to look for streams. So it might help out in the long run. You know, in terms of numbers. I'm not that bothered about them, but seeing numbers go up is nice. Also, I've been kind of thinking about going on... I don't know, what's that website called? Fiverr, that's it. And looking for somebody to do more, like, professional-looking art and stuff. Like, I want to keep the same color scheme, I want to keep the same design, but having something like an animated intro or, like, a proper-looking outro-type screen would be quite fun, I think. Just add like a little professional touch to stuff. That might be might be quite good. Or even stuff like like right now, when I press this button to go here, go here and here, like maybe these could be animated. You know, we could like animate between these two. Alright, sorry, just a couple more messages to deal with there, but we're back. Narrowly avoided that sand trap there. That'd be nice? Yeah, I think I might have a look. I mean, I doubt it'd cost too much, and it'd probably be quite simple in the end, but it'd be better than nothing, I think. Okay. We're doing much better this time around. Just eight seconds to catch up on. Okay, maybe it'll be a bit more if I drive like that. Maybe I should not do that. So I think I want to start going for like a more time lapsey style of doing videos as well. So like with the Landlord Super stuff, I said I was putting together a members only time lapse of completely tearing down <coughs> sorry, completely tearing down the house and rebuilding a new one just as like a starting point for the series. I think as I start building more stuff throughout the series, it'll end up being on like a, a time lapse type thing, so instead of like cutting from one end of me starting a construction to another. So like time lapse between it, which I think would be quite cool. Are we gonna actually catch them this time? I think we have just enough time. Yeah, there we go. Quite comfortably, actually. Three tenths of a second. <laughs> If you can call that comfortable. But we get a car now. We get a free car. Uh, no game, I did not want my replay. Thank you, I'll exit. Okay, what do we get? It has a spoiler. It is... Oh, okay. Just a Toyota. 
probably going to be faster than the car that I've got right now, though. I think I need to keep this Accord. Do I already have one of these? It's an FF. So yeah, I think that's definitely going to be faster than the car I'm driving right now. If I uh, properly modify it. I swear I've already had one of those somewhere. I must have got it from like a previous race. Oh no, I've got the GT4 there. So I've got the Salisa GT4. And the TRD Sports. So are they both FF? No, this one's four-wheel drive. I don't need this one. I don't need another four-wheel drive car. I can get rid of that. Okay. Not bad, not bad. What's the next race? Nope, not Beginner League. I keep doing this. I keep hitting Beginner League. We have FRs next. Okay. Let's go pick out an FR from my garage. Let's see what we've got. It's the CL kit. I don't really want to use the CLK, to be honest, though. It's the MX-5. The RX-7. We can modify the RX-7. There's the Viper. Oh, we could use the Alteza. That's already been modified. I mean, the CLK is going to be so much faster, though. It just can't corner properly. I'm going to have to be careful with that. Um, let me check, see if I've got any tires as well. I'll go and spare. What do I have? I've got softs. I could also buy some medium softs. I'm not going to fit them now, though. When we get into the rest, we'll sort those out. Since it's... I've done it again. <laughs> Since this one's rear-wheel drive, we'll put them on the rear, I think. Mm. Yeah, it might be, might be a good idea to do. So yeah, we'll go racing mediums on the rears just because that's the uh, wheel we're accelerating with. And we'll see if this holds up as well as the FFs did. Probably gonna go and pit on lap two again unless there's obviously like very little in the way of tire wear. Oh no, immediately you can see the rears are starting to degrade, okay. Oh, that little collision just ruined my front right. Cornering on this thing. Like I said, it's not very good. It's very much a straight line car as this AMG. What? What are you doing? Hello, stewards. I think some people need to stop driving into me. Okay, so now not only are we playing the catch-up game right now, but I also need to pit next lap. Screw it, these tires are ruined anyway, I'm just cutting across. Get a bit of a... Oh, God. The track has an Easter egg? Uh, where is it? That'd be interesting to go have a look at. Oversteer. It's so bad. I should have used the other car.
right, hopefully the last three laps will be a lot easier to get around when I'm not being constantly messed around by every other car on the track. Though I don't know how I feel about my amount of time I'm going to have to make up. Because they're already a few seconds ahead of me and I don't... I'm just... I'm going to have to pip and they don't. I like how all the crews in the backs of the pits are just cardboard cutouts, though. Like, they've got um, white outlines as if they were PNGs. Not PNGs, like JPEGs that were cut into PNGs very badly, like with magical res or on Photoshop or something. I guess I have no grip. You have 16 seconds to catch up. I don't know if I can do it in this car, to be honest. I can't use grippier tires because we won't get around the track fast enough on them. Like, they'll just degrade too quickly, and I'll have to pit twice. Which means I'll be even further behind. I've made up, like, half the time I was behind already. That's not too bad. See what I mean? When I'm not jostling with all the other cars on the track, I can actually drive properly. Now, unfortunately, we have to stop taking the jump, because it fucks our cars up, and we can't be having that. seconds to catch up now and we have a whole nother lap left over after this I'm just worried about that front right it's just ruined maybe we had to pit a lap earlier and just pit twice or maybe we should just get the grippier tires and pit twice anyway doesn't really seem like I have much of a choice with this AMG I mean, I can't catch back up if I pit now, I just have to keep going. And deal with having no grip on my front right. Like that. Oh, we're losing positions. Yeah, look at that, I'm just not turning anymore. That's so annoying. I'm holding all the way left on my stick now. I'm practically going in a straight line forwards. Okay, so maybe I hit a lap later then? I hit on the third lap instead of the second in this race? It might be the only way I can get around this. Yeah, I think I have no choice but to finish in 6th now. I cannot get around this track. I mean, maybe a different car would be able to do it fine. Definitely not this Mercedes.
this is painful. This is genuinely painful to get around. I almost thought I would have gotten booted over the finish line there, but we were just shy. We're like 10 meters off. Ah, oh man, that was a pain in the ass. We got 300 credits for our troubles, though. Look at that. Wonderful. Alright, we're gonna have to think about that pit strategy there. Look at that six. Disgusting. I hate it. It's awful. <laughs> Though maybe we'll get in a better car after we finish that, uh, that event. Which would be nice. Anyway, I've got to go. So this would have been, like I mentioned on Discord, the last one before the end of the year. Not the end of the year, but before Christmas at least. Because next Sunday when we would have played DMZ is Christmas Day. And I, I don't think I'm going to be doing that, to be honest. I'd rather spend time with my family than streaming on YouTube. <laughs> no offense, but you know, it's. I think it's understandable. But yeah, I hope everybody has a good Christmas. Have a new year as well. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you around.